One thing about Keely is she's very good at writing captions and like descriptions of things. Like it truly is a skill that I don't think many people have. Like I certainly don't have, like I can write, but you can really like, I think it's the gift of like synthesis and like summarizing shit, like in a very Hmm. funny way. You're wow, very good you. at it. Does it come naturally? It it does for like I would never want to be a copywriter for like other people. Okay. So but it's I self. well, I just things that I'm like really intimately connected to and like understand the full scope of, I feel like then I can like piece things together and like connect them. Like when I do like self-imposed projects for like family members gifts and things I'm like oh I know all of our inside jokes I know all the things that will like really resonate and like be funny and profound or like when I'm writing like wedding speeches and things like those come naturally to me yeah but if someone was like oh can you write this wedding speech for me for this person you don't know and make it funny like I wouldn't be able to do that it's very hard to write pretending to be someone else yeah, well, and in sketch writing too, I think one of my strong suits is like pulling in specifics mm-hmm. because the more like specifics you use, like particular people or places or brands and things, the more people like find that funny because yeah, they like they're very they good have anecdotal ways to relate to things. So then it like triggers comedy. Anyways, and that's what I do with our. <laughs> with our episode description right and just as we're nearing the end of season three this is our season finale um we yeah I just every week like I have no involvement in the episode descriptions because I can't do it like it's interesting because I no I feel like I can do it for other people actually like I write the episode descriptions for the Freebird Society podcast Mm -hmm. and that's like fine because it's like objective but I feel like your like the voice on our podcast is obviously so strong and specific that I can't at this point like I can't do it so I only see the episode description as I'm uploading the episodes and I'm like (laughs) this is the funniest thing I've ever read (laughs) like every week I'm like oh wait it's so good and I just don't know if people even read them so no I know that's what we're gonna do that's what we're gonna do today Mm -hmm. yeah because I don't think like I rarely read the podcast description of anything like I am pulling it up driving or walking and I'm just pressing play Right. Because I'm like listening to podcasts that like I listen to regularly. Yeah. Like I rarely am adding a new one into rotation. So I'm just like listening sequentially. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I have no reason to read the descriptions, but we just really want to make sure our listeners got the full, uh, the full gift of season three Yeah, and all the content that we put out. You know, if you follow us on Instagram, you get that. And we do sneak the episode descriptions, parts of them into our Instagram. That's true. That's true. As well. I will say like, shout out to the YouTube channel subscribers as well, because YouTube, like you are getting a different experience, mm-hmm. um, like 100% if you like can see our facial expressions. Welcome to The Fifth Element, a podcast for people seeking intimate connection with their innermost self through holistic healing, cosmic consciousness, and radical rebirth. We hope each episode is an opportunity for listeners to join the collective journey towards intuition and integration. All right. Well, here we are. We've made it. Yeah, we started this season in February under an Mm -hmm. Aquarius new moon and we're ending it. We're recording this under the Aquarius full moon. So wow, that's cool. Oh, my gosh. Right. (laughs) <laughs> wow divinely orchestrated and where were we in february in february mercury was in retrograde so i was probably not doing well right 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 you had just celebrated a birthday i was about to celebrate a birthday yeah i think i was in austin texas yeah so that's interesting um yeah, I was like fully still traveling, 
single, ready to mingle, loving Austin, falling in love with Austin, Texas. And I feel like from February to now, feels like a blur. Right. Definitely feels like a blur. Um, I will say we've made it the whole season having only one warning on our episodes, which ironically was our episode with Emily Chambers talking about science. (laughs) And we have like a learn about COVID-19 like thing on Spotify. So that's an accomplishment. Um, where were you in February? You were like just living, living at home. I was living at home. I was working for a certain genealogy right, right, company right. in a certain state archives building. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, doing a lot of improv. Yep. Uh, coaching a lot of improv, doing a lot of sketch writing, podcasting. As you should. Right. And traveling. I think yeah. that's around the time that I went to Charlotte. I flew there to run away from my problems. And uh, yeah, I, anything else other than that? Very I will, unsure. I will say the the guests that we had when we were at Matriarch Rising Festival this summer, we were laughing because like literally all of our guests were at Matriarch Rising Festival. (laughs) And what you were just saying with like traveling and like, you know, working different jobs and stuff is a lot of what I go into in my maidenhood circle at the Freebird Society Matriarch Rising Festival. I'm just talking about like this season of life. I know like a lot of mothers listen to this, but also a lot of women that are not mothers, which we would call maidens. And um, the Matriarch Rising Festival talks are now available virtually. So you can actually get like, if you loved the guests this season, they're literally all participating in this virtual festival as well as my maidenhood talk. So I feel like it's, a great like if you're missing the podcast after this and you just want more of this type of content um I'll drop the link in the show notes for the virtual festival because you're basically going to get like new talks and like workshops and bundles from like each guest pretty much that we've had cool so um should we start with Let's start at the beginning. A very good place to start. We're back, yeah. which is the fifth element podcast returns. I remember my dad like sending me that title. Like, I don't think he listens to like every podcast <laughs> and when he will, but he was like, awesome title. Hilarious yeah. title. <laughs> well, preliminaries we love. Mm-hmm. Um, another Aquarius new moon, another season launch of the pod. We're back and have so much to catch you and each other up on. Hold on I to your- I forgot about that. We like- Right, because we like hadn't talked in months because we always wrap up like right before the holidays yeah and you had like busy. skipped town and yeah it was a lot going on yeah there's a lot hold on to your broomsticks witches because we've got some perceived hot takes on health and all-female lineup of guests and a season finale movie review that dares to give frozen Two a run for its money gasp but first in honor of our third season we're kicking things off by answering three questions that will streamline your dating life and of course talking about the big the big three trademark Mm -hmm. and this is only the beginning oh that was so fun oh my gosh wait yeah the three questions i've asked many of them since (laughs) i had so much fun like recording these episodes (laughs) same wow yeah we like really hadn't talked also I remember now like as we're recording we talk like constantly obviously right like recording but I feel like yeah it's weird that we like hadn't talked oh I remember just being like wow we're really going off a deep end this season like 
germ theory versus terrain theory like was nothing That's small the- potatoes yeah. yeah compared to what we're about to embark on yeah and really feeling so comfortable like with like how we talked about things versus like mm-hmm. season one just like starting a podcast with just a desire to like we had no clue like how deep we wanted to go into things or how much we wanted to share how much we wanted to put ourselves out there and I feel like season three was like fully like us being ourselves and really like getting comfortable with just right. like having a a place to just share whatever we wanted pretty much yeah and I remember like in that off season in between seasons when we weren't talking I remember being like oh Emily's like really being really unapologetically herself like very vocal on social media just about like your thoughts about the things Mm -hmm. and I don't know just like coming into your own in like a public way yeah I was like really inspired by that and I was like okay the podcast really has to reflect that that's where we're at yeah because it's what we like promote and like call other people into Mm -hmm. (sighs) wow all right episode 62 uncharted territory astrocartography and rediscovering our natal charts can't decide where to vacation want to know where the love of your life is lurking well just when you thought astrology had reached its limits boom astrocartography steps on the scene in this episode we're showing you how to read your birth chart geographically and taking our seasonal glance at each other's charts as well find out what caused keely's intense boy band fangirl dump that came up a few times this season apparently <laughs> and why you want emily on your side in your next cage match brawl <laughs> what a cliffhanger that was really good our seasonal glance at each other's charts i love that i love doing that um and then we had our first guest which really set the tone i feel for our podcast um quote not an astrology podcast but we mm-hmm. actually had like an astrologer on and are a really inspiring astrologer that we both have learned a lot from Virginia Rosenberg and we called it maps of consciousness intuitive astrology embodiment and joy featuring Virginia Rosenberg mm. cosmic earth librarian and all-around quotable queen Virginia Rosenberg is here to shake up paradigms with her embodied approach to tending the fires of tenderness as only a double leo on the leo full moon could in this episode, Virginia shares intentionally about intuitive astrology, the lives she's lived, her interview with fear, the sovereignty of joy, and the alien novels to come. Like, what a great synopsis, Keely. I mean, she just gives so much. I know, but like, you're really good at summarizing it again. Well, and I always like slide in on a lot of alliterations. So I hope people. Know. I was just going to say, <laughs> is that intentional? Like, you love alliteration, right? Yeah, but it's, like, for me, like, writing is, like, the process of reading. Like, how does it feel, like, in your mouth when you are saying Mm -hmm. it? Because I'm a very, like, experiential, like, kinesthetic kind of person. Yeah, it needs to be, like, performed almost and, like, Mm -hmm. experienced when, yeah. Yeah, so I use a lot of, like, parallelism and a lot of... Yeah alliteration and a lot of um I don't know I just like like long lots of um syllables and yeah bouncy kind of things it's Anyways. very entertaining <laughs> very good um oh then 64 yeah then we kind of started the trend of like we'd have a guest and have like an amazing conversation and like very profound and then we'd go off the deep end on the follow-up solo episode (laughs) so we called this one make america grieve again transmuting death biden's birth chart and the u.s pluto return are you still processing our combo with virginia rosenberg because same (laughs) in this episode we're taking a look at the astrology of 2022 and the importance of embracing conflict and grief Oh, say can you see and in a patriotic (laughs) twist we're breaking down the u.s pluto return america's mommy england issues and looking at the president's birth chart let's just say it's in his best interest to add an astrologer to the old cabinet we did it joe (laughs) 
<laughs> absolutely iconic absolutely iconic <sighs> wow oh boy I loved that one that was a really good one this season was interesting because in past seasons we've had like guest solo guest solo guest solo yeah. this season it was kind of a free-for-all yeah we had like guests that we definitely wanted in and then we realized like just in our recording schedule or mm-hmm. the amount of guests that we couldn't really um structure it like that but I do feel like because we have gotten pretty clear about like what we talk about on the podcast and we have like a pretty like honed in audience Mm -hmm. listeners we can just kind of throw it all out there because we're all talking about the same stuff at the end of the day for sure for sure but we did know we wanted to get into specifically our our journeys on Mm -hmm. the pod and like really interview guests and to ask them questions about their journeys of like making the switch from you know, what they always thought they believed or what they learned to like stepping out on their own and following their own intuition. And we promise that with like our own health journeys. Well, and just like giving people the permission to change their mind, like, yeah. Or just like conveying to you, dear listeners that like, that's a possibility. I think a lot of people see like, and I get caught up in this too. Like I see these women on Instagram or ones I know in real life or like meet at the festival and I'm like wow if only I could like be that sovereign embodied autonomous like Mm. person and it's like nobody came out of the womb being this way right like it was a conscious choice and a lot of them have gone through many different careers and things and as I find myself going through that and it seems like kind of a hopeless thing where you'll never find your place in the world like Mm. yeah just to be able to like have all these people on our podcast this season that are examples of the journey the evolution the fact that you're allowed to change your mind about what you like to do or what you believe or what you advocate for and it's part of that journey that makes you like more intentional in the outcome yeah I in preparing this like maidenhood talk for the virtual festival I was writing a lot about like what I hear from a lot of women in this phase of life, like before kids, especially I think of maidens as like women who want to become mothers. There's like a couple different like definitions, but want it who eventually want to become mothers because you're not necessarily a maiden. If you're like in your forties, decided not to have kids and like are married, like you're in your wild woman stage of life, but Mm -hmm. essentially like this maidenhood phase, like right before motherhood and one of the things I hear a lot is like about scattered energy and like, how do we like as, as mothers, like your energy is just forcibly kind of funneled into your kids. Like, even if you have a million stuff going on, like your priorities just inherently change, but maidenhood is that time where like you, you have permission to kind of like fail and pivot and change your mind and like Mm. you are actually meant to do that just for the reason that you said of like being able to hone in on who you are and like what's important to you in your next phase of life but I do feel like this maidenhood time is a time where like we have permission to constantly be like shifting changing and trying out new things and like failing um in a way that we can't when we have like children depending on us and like depending on stability and like you can't necessarily be just like switching around from job to job or place to place and figuring out all this stuff but like it does feel nice to know like there is this is like the time to be doing that and I feel like the podcast like reflected that like just this idea of us like learning how to like figuring out like where we want to put our energy and like we haven't necessarily figured that out and I think that's totally in alignment with like the season that we're in we're just trying things out yeah love that um so Keely's health journey from sick to stable to sovereign love that title 
Keely's never been married, but that doesn't mean she can't live her post-divorce, eat, pray, love journey to finding her best self. In this not-so-drunk history, Keely details her diagnoses of tumors and migraines and anxieties. Oh, my. <laughs> Let's just say 2020 wasn't her first quarantine. (laughs) Listen to hear why she broke up with allopathic medicine, how she found a home in her body, and why Jesus wanted her to drink coffee in elementary school. This was so good. Like, I feel like with our personal episodes, I got so many, like, DMs and messages just, like, relating and maybe even people having that same projection of what you were saying about, like, oh, I wish I could be that you know, like embodied or confident in choices. And I think this gave people a lot of like relatability of, no, this is like new to us. Like we're figuring it out and we've had like a long like journey to get here. Yeah. I remember editing the episode and like texting you and being like, I like, we can't put this out. Like, I don't oh, yeah. want to hear this. Like, it's so boring like and like drawn out and I remember processing that with you and being like this is just so like this part of my identity is so no longer like at the forefront of how I view myself right that like to rehash the history is just like boring to me (laughs) like I'm like this no longer matters to me in an everyday life because it used to be so long But then did you, how did you feel once it was released? Oh, I mean, I, like, I really haven't chronicled everything to, like, anyone. Yeah. Really. So it was kind of freeing just to, like, be honest, because we talk so much about health and, like, I'm very vocal about, or, like, have been historically vocal about health stuff, like, on social media and just like in life so I think it gave a lot of context to people that I was like happy that they had of like these aren't just like contrarian beliefs that I have just for the sake of being like different it's like truly like so important to me that people find freedom in healthcare and find like their voice and believe that they can be well like that's so so important to me and so to give people that context of why yeah, was like, good. Like, I'm glad I did it. And so many people reached out and they were like, yeah. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, right, that was intentional. Or they were like, this was so helpful to me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, so I'm happy yeah. that it is, it is a living piece of media. Yeah. And just like reminding people that like, the beliefs or the opinions that everyone holds comes from embodied experience and we can have compassion for those who choose differently based on their experiences but also like wanting the same and like sharing those experiences totally like get that and speaking of moving right along Mm -hmm. to one of our most unhinged (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is where it all gets yeah this is truly one of my favorite episodes of the season yeah same <laughs> fact fear and fauci unmasking the pandemic pyramid scheme forget your zoom pleasantries because we're back and definitely not on mute in this episode <laughs> we're keeping things light with a discussion on vaccines medical mandates and marketing tactics with a healthy dose of fauci impressions for good measure If you're tired of being a damsel in distress to the CDC, we're here to remind you that it's okay to trust your body, to ask questions, to live freely, and even get kicked out of churches on multiple continents. (laughs) If only there was a way to spell out. (laughs) (laughs) So good. I loved that one. I feel like, yeah. I did too I think there was like a moment of like oh my gosh is this like too much but then again just like summoning the courage and I don't know I think one of the reasons why I haven't I don't know if this is true for you but like I think it is like I haven't gotten any backlash about any of the episodes really ever and I just don't get a lot of I, I don't get a lot of like 
backlash from people that know me like at all Mm -hmm. because I think we do take so much time to kind of like explain where we're coming from in a very calm and non-confrontational matter because our our opinions and our thoughts are so embodied from our experiences so there's no reason to like get defensive because we're not clinging to something that has no tangible reality or something that we're like going to change our mind about because it just is and if we have an experience that like causes us to change our mind like then we're confident in that as well and it's just like opened up so much non-confrontational dialogue I feel like right if we had a podcast four years ago and COVID happened four years ago yeah I would have put out a very different episode yeah totally you know like and isn't that how it should be like (laughs) you know our thoughts on things have evolved even since season one season two even from the beginning of this season I'm sure yeah about lots of things but it's like that's the point yeah if you're changing your mind then that means you're learning and growing and integrating from your lived experiences and those experiences are changing and evolving yeah and in turn so are you Mm -hmm. anywho so then we we uh had a little intimate chat with you yeah emily's health journey the power of somatic awareness um this one featured a trigger warning um for doctors stand-up comedians and select kombucha brands um and in this episode emily shares how stress can have debilitating effects on the body and how somatic therapy changed her life for all you gut health girlies who want to truly know your body, this is the episode for you. Mm-hmm. Gut health girlies. Right. Um, and then we really just dive <laughs> right on in with the next episode. Oh. Um, about German New Medicine. And we called it German New Medicine, the ancient language of awareness featuring Dr. Melissa. So my Our queen. literal queen. What if every time you felt, quote, sick, you said, quote, my body's in an active state of healing? What if it were true? In episode 68, we're talking to Dr. Melissa Sell about German New Medicine, the radical belief that the body works with us to protect and heal us after emotional conflicts occur. Forget Duolingo, learn the ancient biological language that explains how tumors aren't random, cancer isn't inevitable, and how the concept of autoimmunity is absurd pack your pb and j's because the time has come to escape the fear narrative and return to nature like when you're listening to the episode do you like take notes throughout on like little phrases that come to you or do you literally write this in one fell swoop because it's iconic well when i'm editing i like have a like i'll be editing i'll be simultaneously editing the episode making the graphic and have like a running google doc open where i'm just like keeping track of like funny little things that come up wow. um and then yeah we just kept the radicalness going with episode 69 hair healing and herbalism replacing beauty standards with sovereignty featuring ariel de martinez If you think season three has been radical so far, wait until you hear how we don't use shampoo. Mm -hmm. In episode 69, our friend and personal witch on the hill, Ariel de Martinez, reveals the the potency of herbal medicine and why she doesn't subscribe to certifications or essential oils. Join us as we unpack beauty as intuition instead of an arbitrary standard. Plus a bonus update on Emily's ghost pipe saga. Mm. Go back to our season two finale. Right. 60 for more on that. Right, right, right. Any updates now? Yeah. Um well, not really updates, but like I saw Ghost Pipe like a few weeks ago, and it was just like, hello, keeping my distance. I feel like a lot of other people in our sphere have also been coming across it and like yeah. that's always so fascinating to me and so cool that you've like put it on people's radar. Yeah. And like I've moved on. Like, I don't need to have any more personal encounters at the moment. <laughs> right. Like, or like I when think- we were at, was it when we were at um, the Radical Public Health Intensive when 
Adelaide's husband like texted you. Oh yeah. And she was like, did my husband just text you about ghost pipe? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, hey, is this ghost pipe? And I was like, yes. And he goes, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love that my husband just texted you that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so funny. All right. Rolling with the guests. This was our, our long yeah. stretch of guests here. Episode Good. 70. Yep. Kiddest on the pod, celebrating your cervix, the power of witnessing your womb. Love that. How often do you celebrate your cervix? Throw parties for your pussy? Yeehaw with your yoni? Kiddest (laughs) of the womb room joins us in episode 70 to share about her work helping women release their addiction to victimization from the medical system, how embodied expression is the practice of presence, and the healing work of simply witnessing your body, our bodies. Listen in if you want to shift from indecision to intuition, learn what they aren't teaching med students about women's health, and discover the real cause of ovarian cysts. So good. Um, ooh, and then an amazing, another amazing guest, Isabel Malvin. This episode really took everyone on a ride. Like, I feel like we covered so much in this episode. Right. There's only so many characters you can put into the title. Right. To make it so, like, feasible. And I just remember, like, 10 times workshopping different titles because wow. there was just so many things that you could highlight from the episode because she just had so much to share about so many different yeah. things. It was amazing. So good. Come out of hiding, binge eating, hypnosis, and an unmedicated colonoscopy featuring Isabella Malvin. Right. Like you can't talk about having an unmedicated colonoscopy and then not include that in the title. But also you can't, like she came on to talk about binge eating, but also like you can't not talk about the fact that she's a hypnotist. Exactly. There's so much. All right. This may be our hashtag matriarchy season, but it's also our hashtag morning matcha season. And in episode 71, we've got a woman who's no stranger to either. You may know at whose body is it for her exposure of truths and advocacy for women. But did you know she's also an artist, hypnotist, and snake charmer? Isabella Malvin joins us to share how she healed years of binge eating and self-sabotage and how hypnosis and community were the most potent medicine. From self-sabotage to skipping down Park Avenue after an unmedicated colonoscopy, this is an episode you won't, don't, won't want to miss. Literally one of my favorite stories so far. Skipping down Park Avenue after an unmedicated colonoscopy. Like, you don't get that on other podcasts. No. I dare to say. Right. Also, we haven't mentioned so far in this episode, but this was our matriarchy season, if it wasn't yeah. clear by our all female cast of guests. Doesn't it feel weird to think that we used to interview men? Yeah, honestly, I was looking at our YouTube uh, channel the other day and I was like, wow, all these like beautiful women on like every single episode. And then I was like, except Lynn. <laughs> okay, okay. Lynn is the only ex. Exception. Well, speaking of. Oh, what a segue. Cabinet battle number three was episode 72, dueling well in the astrology of Lin Manuel. <laughs> like, do people get cabinet battle number three? Like, I really <laughs> hope. I hope that they do. I feel like our listeners would. <sighs> there are two cabinet battle songs in Hamilton, everyone. Mm-hmm. Cabinet battle number one, cabinet battle number two. This mm-hmm. episode was Emily and I's great dispute. Mm-hmm. So obviously it's cabinet battle number three. I just the first of to... a couple. Yeah. Right. Our first solo episode in weeks. And guess who just had to be a part of it? And in the midst of our matriarchy season, no less. Sigh. <laughs> Today we're continuing our season-long theme of having polarizing conversations by discussing the topics we deg- disagree on wholeheartedly. Yes, it's mostly about persistent piragua peddler Lynn Manuel Miranda. <laughs> Some of my best work. In this mid-season catch-up, you'll also hear why Keely's the poster child for German New Medicine and the deets on her forthcoming documentary. And Emily shares her favorite desert-dwelling hobby and comes clean about being a SoundCloud rapper. <laughs> like persistent like, piragua peddler it's you should put that in his instagram bio piragua peddler for me <laughs> right like wow uh, wow the way you write is literally amazing <laughs> and then we just like swing back around like like swing the pendulum around to episode 73 right like remember it's it's to heal I really hope everyone's nervous systems 
are regulated because yeah. like the extremes that we bounce back and forth from yeah. is wild you don't know what to expect <laughs> right oh um, my gosh to remember is to heal showing up for your inner child featuring hannah grace what do school dances love is blind and childhood trauma have in common well they're all talked about in this episode for starters <laughs> hannah grace of web of grace is here to share the way she walks with women through grief embodiment and inner child work looking to meet yourself in integrity want to trace relationship patterns and emotional responses to their source join us as we explore what it means to do the work and to take responsibility for your healing so good. The science of sovereignty. Loved this conversation with Emily Chambers. Living cyclically while making a living in STEM. In case you missed it, we identify as a science podcast now. In episode 74, we talked to real life scientist Emily Chambers about the spirituality of materials engineering, how she honors her womanhood in a male dominated field, the necessary defects holding our world together, and how she went from trusting the science to trusting her intuition. Mm. Come for the shake shack spring water, stay for the in flight drinking game. Welcome <laughs> aboard. <laughs> like, you have to listen to the episode to really appreciate it, you know? But, like, you make it, like, very necessary to listen to the episode after reading that. I hope so. I hope so. They're so Yeah, good. this was one of my favorite episodes of the season as well. Yeah, um, I love that one. And we really, if you listen to the episode, like, you know we truly are a science podcast. Truly. Like, we truly are scientists. Love that for me. Right. <laughs> um episode okay this this next one I've had lots of people comment on IRL yeah this has been a really popular one like on our YouTube very 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 popular um yeah eat the cheese into the <laughs> eating and the vegan agenda featuring Christine Rivy. so three x vegans walk into a podcast they don't last long because, well, there are no historically surviving vegan societies. <laughs> Some might just call that an epidemic. Christine Rivy returns in episode 75 to explain why she abandoned her staunch vegan lifestyle in favor of a life that centers nutrient-dense animal products. She asks the question, why are we eating an entirely different diet than our biology asks of us? While Keely asks, do you need cinnamon rolls or do you need someone to love you? Learn what difference a single egg can make for women, the importance of embracing the paradox of life and death, what happens when we begin to invest in the bodies we call home, and why there are no excuses. Wow. Her warning, salads. (laughs) Salads and smoothies are canceled. Yeah, we canceled a lot this season. (sighs) Yeah, eat the cheese. Wise words of Christine. A lot of people have reached out because they were like wait you were vegan and I'm like right just not right. enough to talk about it right um and other people have like in real life to me they've like been somewhere and they're like gotta eat the cheese right <laughs> like at a restaurant <laughs> like, and yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. wow this the season was so good we had like just elite we literally went on yeah we did speaking of yeah matriarch of, herself yeah someone who really lives out matriarchy in her family and we got a glimpse into that what can't women do conscious leadership and living matriarchy featuring emily saldea what would happen if you were willing to have what you want Free Birth Society's Emily Saldea joins us to share how she's built a life that centers women and why her family and the world are better for it. Through her study of global female oppression and conscious leadership practices, she broke out of the victim consciousness of activism and learned to work for rather than against. Hmm. If you want to live an expansive life, be affirmed in your radicality, give birth in Hawaii, or even join the circus, Emily is here to tell you how you can have it all. Oh, such a Sagittarius description. (laughs) Right. Like... Sad stellium life right there that idea of um working for rather than against is something that i've like thought about so many times since we recorded this episode um Um, not me just getting a text that said hey do you call debbie often (laughs) (laughs) 
Right. Movie being right. our infamous psychic medium, of course. Right, That's right, so right. Funny. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, that idea of working for rather than against. I've thought of so many times and have like talked to so many people about because so many people are just caught up in this like activist, like, what are yeah. you working for? What are you marching for thing? And it's like, what if we just constructed our lives in a way where we were just like working with the things that we love every day instead of working with the things that we hate every day? Right. Right, right, right. Such a amazing release. That was so good. And then oh, the next one. Oh, you. All the episodes were so different, but like so poignant. So potent. Oh Truly. my God. Flourishing after pharma from involuntary hold to holding space for healing featuring Mindy Schlechter. What a title, first of all. Hmm. O-H-I-O-M-G. Do we have a fabulous episode for you? Mindy Schlechter of Uplores Coaching joins us to share how defaultly prescribed pharmaceutical cure-alls like birth control and antidepressants landed her in an involuntary hospital hold, the steps she took to break free from the institutions that sought to contain her, and how she works with women today to hold space for their own healing journeys. Themes of sisterhood, true balance, mental health, Ayurvedic healing, and sexual wellness abound in this, the first meeting of what might just have to become an eldest daughter support group Mm. and at this time mindy's uh group for moms it's called reigniting roots is open and i'm teaching astrology in it yes so she takes like six moms and it's like an hour and a half on wednesday mornings for um a couple months and it's basically like how to come back to yourself as a mom. And she gives like the context of, you know, you're a mom and your kids are like finally back to school and you have a few hours to yourself every day now and you spend it all like cleaning or prepping or cooking or doing errands. And that little voice in your head that says like, oh, maybe I could take time for myself today. Like sometimes you need to commit to something to like give yourself that. Mm. And she's such a good facilitator and coach and just like mentor. So if you're a mom and you resonated with that, like her style and that episode, or just like want some support, um, yeah, her uh, group is open for enrollment and everyone loved it last time. So highly recommend. Yeah, she's amazing and like so beautiful. I know, right? I just remember, like, on the episode, and then, like, the photo she sent me, I'm like, you just glow constantly. She seriously does. Yeah. Um, And then we... Off the hinges we go. Off the hinges, here we go. <laughs> 78, rebranding rec- retrograde, gleaming meaning from Mercury. The trickster trademark is at it again, which means the cars are brinking on explosion and the X's are straight out of the woodwork. And yet, despite all the chaos of a retrograde transit, we're breaking down the fruits of this call to intention, exposing the theological unsoundness of everything happens for a reason, discussing other astrological themes of the present times and daring to be seen through it all. Hashtag justice for Mercury. Subscriptions. That's all I have to say about that. All right. <laughs> um, huge fan of the next conversation. Possibly one of my favorites. I feel like I keep saying that, but I loved our conversation about Saturn Returns with Auburn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially like being about to enter it. It was like very was helpful. So good. Yeah, it was very, very good. Um. The exit ramp to destiny, embracing your Saturn return. Uh, Midlife crisis, more like Saturn return season. Ages 29 to 31 get a bad rap, but when Saturn returns to its natal sign at this time, it's an opportunity to realign with your true path. Astrologer and all-around gifted mystic Auburn Lily joins us to share the wisdom of this transit and how it played out in her own chart. In this episode, you'll meet old grandfather Destiny, find out why Keely's joining a cult and how Emily's getting rich, uh, or how Emily's getting rich and learn why we're all hashtag pro pickles. (laughs) 
Mm-hmm. Love it. Okay, the next one. Yeah, that one popped off. No, like, this is my best work. Right. In titling an episode. You take it away. Red, the color of their flags. Les men leaving us miserable. <laughs> Do people get it? No, like, people Do don't people get, get it. it. Like, I have the Snapchat recordings of, like, me sending to you, like, the evolution of how this episode came to be titled as such. Perhaps we will share them, but... Right. Like, I was Red crying laughing. Like, here's the other thing, is, like, to truly appreciate our podcast, you really have to, like, know... You have to like all of the things we know. You have to be us. Essentially, (laughs) the podcast is for us and our listening pleasure and our like niche interests. Like, do people know like how much you love Les Mis? Like, no. Also, do they even like know Les Mis? Because, like, again, in order to appreciate the jokes, like these are niche jokes. Yeah. Niche comedy only. Anyways. Black, the color of our despair. <laughs> Let's be honest, elementals. The red flag seem to be running rampant these days, and it has us wondering if we'd be better on oh, our I own. Know. In episode 80, Keely's exposing some very specific warning signs while Emily shares her deal-breaking icks. We can't help that our lived experiences have led us to have strong feelings about Ramdas apologists, hashtag Kravis, smart house, and backpack boys trademark. Listen to find out why some men aren't some men aren't that different from fish named after other animals. This we swear, swear by the stars. stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this episode was crazy town. And then we swing. <laughs> what was next? What was that? <laughs> no jump on that <laughs> and we swing because this is truly like the spectrum the this spectrum of our podcast can be summed up in 80 and 81 come on right that was like poor planning on our part honestly truly <laughs> because what 81, are we thinking we had our beloved naturopathic doctor, Emily Telfair, talking about heart-centered healing, naturopathic medicine, and craniosacral therapy. No, I literally cried in this episode. Right. Right. It was so good. And also, oh my gosh. everyone needs, if you've listened to that episode, you need to go back and watch the YouTube because her, like, presence is healing and you can, mm-hmm. like, feel it a little bit through the, the video. Yeah. Have you ever had a two-hour intake with a doctor who desires to know the vitality of your heart and not just your vital signs? Mm. Have you ever been handed a prescription that says, be with the trees? Let's just say, once you go naturopathic, you can't go back. We are truly honored to welcome our personal pocket angel, Dr. Emily Telfair of Heart Space Natural Medicine to episode 81. We've mentioned her countless times before because of her unparalleled influence on our physical healing and in turn, our whole lives. And we are so grateful for all the space her own heart holds for so many. In addition to sharing what naturopathic medicine is, Dr. Emily shares her journey to becoming a doctor who centers the connection between mind, body, and spirit, and just how important returning to nature is for the nervous system. We also share our experiences with craniosacral therapy and shed a few tears along the way. We love you, Dr. Emily. Mm, It's so good. Like I had to write a novel for her. Yeah, exactly. Also someone else who just like knows so much and can talk about so many different things. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was amazing. She is queen. And then we had our two-part um, improv special. Yes. This was really fun. I really liked these conversations as well. Me too, because we haven't, like, done improv together in so long. Mm-hmm. Nor, like, really talked about it. But it's been a huge part of my life in the last couple of years. So. Mm-hmm. It was really cool to talk about. Um, yeah. So part one of our improv is integration. Oh, they're both titled the same. Improv mm-hmm. is integration, finding intimacy through tension. 
In improv, we never say no to our scene partners. And here at the pod, we never say no to learning about a tool for integration. Improv changed our lives in 2018. And we've been sharing its promotion of active listening, trusting well, co-creating and fostering meaningful relationships ever since. In this episode, we're also breaking down the big difference between theater kids and kids with theater backgrounds, finding out why Keely is a time Lord and why Emily doesn't need six eggs. Stay tuned for part two coming out next week. Hashtag justice for sharp. Our theater kid episode. Emily, yeah. this is what I need to say about that. Okay. As I was editing that episode, I was like, oh. I was a theater kid. Right. No, yeah. like, <laughs> I haven't told you this yet. Oh no! Like, no, like I, uh, like I was a theater kid. Like I surely was. Yeah. No, I think everyone knew that. <laughs> Which is fine. Like we love and accept you as you are. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, we just wouldn't have been friends in high school. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I really trust in the timing of all of my friendships because there are many people that I wouldn't have been friends with if not at that like very moment of time that we came together. Truly, you know? truly. I feel yeah. like that's most everyone. Yeah, for sure. Okay, part two was yes and we're back with part two of our improv deep dive. Now that we've laid the base reality, we're heightening by sharing some of the offstage applications of improv's core philosophies to our families, romantic relationships, clients, births, and more. Mm. We spend some time looking at the astrological correlations, particularly the Aries Libra axis, and the medicine of fostering authentic partnerships. Listen to find out why we think improv is the most equitable art form and how you can use it to step into self-awareness. Uh, love it. True. So good. Um, and we swing back around to talking mm. about somatic therapy and the nervous system featuring Eleanor Bromwell, my somatic therapist. Love As mentioned episode. in your health journey episode. Yep. You've heard Emily mention her incredible somatic therapist many times before, and we're so excited she's here in episode 84. Eleanor Bramwell, founder of BodyWise Institute, is here to share her journey to becoming a somatic experiencing practitioner and to discuss another one of our favorite name drops, the nervous system. Mm -hmm. These two somatic celebrities invite us into a deeper conversation of healing, awareness, and resiliency. What story does your body tell? Wow. So good. So intriguing. All these descriptions are so clickbaity. Mm. Love it. Um... Episode 85 was, we were feeling quite discombobulated during this episode. You could say. Um, we titled it, Leo season is coming, parentheses, to save us. Yeah, there have been several times throughout the season where I have texted Emily or snapped you a picture of the title and been like, is this too dramatic? Right, right. But if ever there were a time for drama, it would be amidst Leo season. Cheer Raise up. your hand if you've been personally victimized by astrological translate, transits. Yep. The only thing as universal as Regina George induced trauma. <laughs> <This is something laughs> we'll be honest, elementals. Just like Katie Heron trying to assimilate into American high school, we're feeling a little chaotic and discombobulated. And just mm. like Leo tried to save Kate from another watery demise, Leo uh. season is here to save us from our cancer season woes. But we're talking about the impending Jupiter retrograde, counting down to our Saturn returns, identifying Keeley's stalker, and finding out why Emily's notorious in Massachusetts salons. Oh, and speaking of movies, head over to our Instagram, blah, blah, blah. Um, so good. Yeah, that one was wild. We literally don't talk about Mean Girls or the Titanic in the episode. You just went with it. I just went with it. Sometimes I need to like pull some things into the description to add to the thumbnail because- yeah. There are just only so many starry backgrounds I can put into the thumbnails. Right. That one Everyone features the Titanic. Yeah. Shout out to <laughs> Keely's thumbnails on YouTube. <laughs> like everyone needs to just take a moment 
and go look because there are there's so much meaning honestly there's like little easter eggs in each one yes keely like in the one for emily chambers episode i put her tattoo yeah in it like in and amongst the stars it's literally amazing there's some some little some little finds let me know what you find over at our youtube channel seriously it's so good 86 wow that yeah 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 i can't say i (laughs) have been taking the eating the wise wisdom of uh yeah but i should be i should be well you know whatever's regulating to you all in due time all in due time um 86 was ayurveda a user's manual for this human life featuring veronica wolf casey move over adam conover ayurveda is ruining everything in today's episode and by ruining we mean saving us from the devil's handiwork aka smoothies Ayurvedic chef Veronica Wolf Casey spills the chai on this ancient science of life and how it can bring balance into yours. In spite of the bag of lettuce, I mean lies, we've been sold by allopathic medicine. (laughs) Listen to find out why Keely's cooking all her water, why Emily needs iced coffee like she needs a hole in her head, and why you should be looking for ripe bananas in more bowls than just your fruit bowl. Once again, trigger warning for vegans. Wow. All I have to say is wow. Cheese. An icon. Yeah. And she really does need her own podcast, Veronica, if you're listening. Yeah, she's- Give the people what they want. Mm -hmm. She's so funny. I was crying laughing in this episode when she was talking about smoothies. Yeah. (laughs) She gets so fired up. Truly. Truly. Okay, and moving right along to episodes that literally popped off. Right. The queens are popping off themselves. Finally graced us with their presence. Finally. Yes. Episode 87, Sister Witches, a bond that transcends lifetimes, featuring Heidi Bruce and Molly Bruce. Such a good title. Thank y'all. Thank you for being sister witches that have transcended lifetimes (laughs) and incarnated in this one to be my friend. (laughs) It's no surprise we love talking about sisterhood. And today, the real life Bruce sisters are uniting for a special sisters episode of the podcast. Heidi gives us the scoop on her quality time with Abby Lee Miller. Molly tells about all the things she doesn't remember, and they both reveal what it was like growing up with Emily as a big sister. We also hear about their past life coven, the Capricorn Christmas turned Jamaican breakdown, and the <laughs> TSA kidnapping scare. Mother Goose is quaking. Yeah. Like, how do you do this? Like, your sisters are so funny. But they just, you like, give me the content. sum it up so well. Like, you, like, take all of the jokes and just, like, can do it somehow. <laughs> we haven't really talked about this one. That one? Well, we haven't talked about the title. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Again, I don't know if, if people are catching these inside jokes, but Bad Blood is the Taylor Swift song where she's speaking about her public duels with her enemies right of which we became in this episode Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there are 137 days till christmas but there are only three more episodes of season three if we're still friends by the end of this one that is the clickbait (laughs) this week ebenezer i mean emily tells us why she hates christmas exposes her grammy award-winning aunt and gives us insight into her complicated relationship with taylor swift meanwhile keely reveals the darkest time of her life that may or may not involve one direction's rise to fame (laughs) there's what it's like to grow up in a family that loves traditions and even cries about an elf and man child yes we talk about lin manuel but only for a little bit okay (laughs) (laughs) but in the following episode we talk about him quite a lot so yeah true Um, Wow. Yeah, Keely, it's quite the gift that you have. Um, I didn't propose us to do this just to receive affirmation. No, but... Writing. Um, I, I just thought it would be fun. Yeah, um, but, like, you should receive affirmation because... Okay, I'm receiving it. Thank you. Yeah, because, like, I feel like I always... Obviously, when someone has gifts that you, like, clearly don't, it's more like awe-inspiring and it just 
feels like an impossible task like for me to what if I were to have to write like a description because the bar has been set so <laughs> just off the top some <laughs> might call that a zone of genius <laughs> right just off the top I forget which episode that was but that was the red flags one no just off the top but the zone of genius oh, oh, oh. I think that yeah. was season two yeah that was season two yeah wow yeah just off the top <laughs> <laughs> the red flags episode made me like more than ever wish we lived near each other so that we could record I know together because it would just be so much we're trying to make that happen for season oh. I feel like we should just rent a place together for two weeks and just record like the entire season the entire season I know because then it like we wouldn't be able to chronicle our like journeys right which speaking of might be the shift for season four yeah unless we get serious backlash about it but it feels like the intuitive path it does because also we need a little time to like acquire more guests because I (laughs) have all of my connections (laughs) I don't know anybody else yeah well and honestly we take like such a long break between I mean compared to other podcasts I guess between season launches so that we have time to record but like I don't know we evolve a lot in like the months we take off yeah so who's to say yeah what is to come but let us know if you have thoughts or requests Mm mm-hmm what it's a journey a what a ride it's been a great season it's really well, be... god it's illuminated all facets of our personality <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, someone told me they were like whenever I'm sad I just listen to the Lin-Manuel episode oh my gosh that's so cute <laughs> I love that I'm like right because you're like oh there are people who are crazier than me <laughs> what will you be doing on your time off um I need to know because we won't talk to each other (laughs) only we will because I'm not being as chaotic as before like well same hopefully chilling um well that's like not true because I'm literally taking like (laughs) in a van in like two weeks the way that like is chill for you though no it really is like I feel so grounded and settled I'm in Phoenix I feel like I'll be in Phoenix for a while um which is interesting like I and I'm not really feeling the desire to travel like there are things I will be traveling for Mm -hmm. but I'm not like oh I want to see this I want to see this like I want to go to this place visit these people because I did so much visiting of people in the past year and like spending a lot of time with people that I love so now it feels like a nice pause to doing that and just like being a little bit more like internal and inward and like every weekend since I've been here it's been like oh do you want to like go out and do something I'm like no like I literally just want to like chill and like yeah we've taken some road trips and like spent a lot of time in nature and stuff but to get like myofascial release Right. <laughs> like I've totally shifted from like wanting to like go out every weekend and like like just be super social and now I'm just like nah I want to play the banjo <laughs> right as mentioned yeah we'll in, be arriving soon in the last couple weeks episode, episode ago. yeah um do you feel like that's like phasing out of maidenhood is that the well I still I feel like I definitely feel way like definitely feel maidenhood vibes in the sense of figuring out what to do with my like time energy work money situation but there's definitely a different energy from like single maidenhood which Mm. was very like like expansive and like wanting to like explore and meet a bunch of people and now I'm like 
I don't need to meet any more people like for a right. while you met the one and only <laughs> well and just even like friends like I feel like I felt the enorm uh what's the word like enormity of my community like this past year and really felt like not that there's never room for like more people in your life but I felt very um like wow there's so many people that I want to like pour time into Mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily feel like I can take on more so just that feeling of like wanting to build a community or like wanting to explore I'm like no I feel like very content with my social like capacity right now right it's like your heart is that capacity like that when you put it like that <laughs> and I feel just like stop the no <laughs> just stop the um I feel like such an aversion to working which is so good right. for me like I just want to like sit around and that has never been the case Emily are you like, ever embracing Taurus culture? am I like domesticated <laughs> This wild woman has been tamed. No, I'm just like the Taurus culture. Are you cooking? I I am like more. I mean, I'm not cooking, but I'm like fed with a Taurus rising person who insists on like we go grocery shopping twice a week. And I'm like the amount of time I've spent a grocery store in the past five years does not amount to like the amount that I now spend. In the well, the breakfast steaks aren't gonna buy themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just feel so much more like this is such an obvious, but I had to feel it in my body of like, wow, life is so much easier when you're not constantly on the go. Like, wow, I have so much more time to work, to like work thoroughly, or to like finish things, or to create things, and to make food or like you know just enjoy life without you know that earth energy is something that I do not possess and so being with like someone who has a lot of earth in his chart it's like he said something along the lines of like oh it'll be really nice to have like a place and to have like you know our home base and to like settle into that and I'm like yeah but like I always want to like be able to like go and like be like up and moving and like go and he's like well yeah that's like what traveling is and I was like (laughs) oh right like I forgot (laughs) that like you don't have to either just like be on the road or be in one place like and that was an interesting realization that I had of like wow I've been like really extreme with my lifestyle in a way that I don't need to be. Wow. Yeah. Well, because you've like found that grounding and stability within yourself. So no matter where you are, you can come back to that. Yeah. We and you like have someone to come home to. Ew. Also, I feel like getting to know myself in a totally different way, like being in a intimate relationship, like there's so, I feel like that need for like chilling down and like being more internal is necessary because I'm like there are parts of myself that I'm like meeting for the first time with this person you know Mm -hmm. so that's been necessary and dating men after their Saturn return is different Mm. I just want to like if there's one thing that I can leave listeners with from this season I do want it to be that because it's very different to have someone who's like like I'm we're both in that phase where we're still like figuring things out and like our energy is again like kind of scattered and we're just like trying different things but to have someone who's just like clear about like where they're at in life what they want and they're just like secure and like settled and not every man after the sudden return is like that obviously but I guess someone who's like reached the rewards of their Saturn return and Saturn has actually like manifested in them it feels so nice because it allows me to like be a little bit more like chaotic or to like explore more and like just be in that phase without being like 
you know, if you had two people in that phase, there can be a little bit of even like the shadow side of Saturn of like constraint or like being overly rigid yeah, because you're trying to like control where now it just feels really good to have someone that's like over that and like matured in that way. And I'm more free to like be Mm. trying and failing different things. I have made the mistake of dating men in their Saturn return. Oh, good God. Which like, you've got to give people the space and the grace to like figure themselves out during that time. Like, it's like, that's what the time is about. So like sure. nothing against them. It's just like a pattern that I need to be aware of. But yeah. it's hard because like being approaching that, it's like the sensible timeline of like, men that I'm interacting yeah. with but yeah take care of yourselves people mm-hmm. but also yeah coming out on the other side like I'm like I stress out regularly about like the fact that I don't have things figured out but also I'm like I have no stress about myself post Saturn return like I'm like I will have things figured out like yeah. I'll be okay I'll be good I'll be thriving yeah it's just like the right now so to like yeah I love this invitation too yeah date men (laughs) who've already gone through that that being said right and like that being said you can fall you can like date someone who's passed through Saturn return who knows what they want and it can be not what you want right so that's like the other specification of why I feel like it feels so great because it's like he knows what he wants and it's exactly what I want and so I'm like figuring that out but I have this person that's like centered in that and is like Mm -hmm here it is like when you're ready to like come to that conclusion or not conclusion but like holding the same vision and someone has like already come to that and mine is still kind of like a vision where I'm just trying to like figure it out but it feels nice to like yeah have that stability who would have thought well yeah I love that for you so you're going to be in Phoenix and then traveling around a bit. Are you yeah staying out West for the holidays since we'll be gone during that time? I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. Okay. Um, yeah. Follow me on Instagram if you haven't yet. I'm sure I'll be updating everyone. Amazing. Um, do you know what your next months look like? No. Okay. Surely I do not. Um, I don't know what next week looks like, but you know, we'll get there. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I am uh present. Huh? It's called being present. Right. That's what the universe keeps telling me. Mm. Um Pluto's been at the last degree of Capricorn, which happens to be where my moon is. So it's a lot of just kind of like self-focus, but also in the words of Virginia Rosenberg, excavating. So mm just kind of like seeing what's left over from the last like however long and seeing what's useful and purging what's not and gearing up for like a very astrologically exciting spring Mm. for me personally I'm sure many others too but yay we'll see (laughs) we'll see what's happening Right. I would I would like I would like a move. That's what I'm okay for manifesting is a move. And like astrologically exciting doesn't always mean what we think it means, you know. How so? (laughs) But like I'm not anticipating it being like fun and light <laughs> right, she made right. that very clear <laughs> okay good okay good <laughs> <laughs> but she also me. kind of led me to believe that like right now would be like kind of intentional but light and it has not been right well if now is light then it's right light. what is coming right because then like what is heavy right <laughs> So anyway, it's just trying to get all my ducks in a row. Correct, correct. 
And then, you know, maybe we'll see where the tides take me. But yeah, I'm manifesting a move and like, I don't know, just a job that like is aligned and energizing. Yeah. Like, you know, I really thought I wanted the freedom of like remote independent work. Mm. But I really am desiring the emotional freedom of something just like more wow traditional and consistent yeah that makes sense and like salaried (laughs) yeah so I don't know that's another like invisible permission slip I'll give anybody who is like feeling in that because I feel like there's a lot of pressure to just like boss bitch your way into you know, yeah. living your best Instagrammable, like, business life. And that works for a lot of people. But for me, I'm, like, the cost benefit of, like, my nervous system of, like, putting that much effort and yeah. time into building something is just, like, not where my body's at. And that's okay. And again, I'll plug my maidenhood talk in this virtual festival summit. But, like, this, like, if you are in your maidenhood phase and you're building something it's most likely going to change (laughs) very often because your priorities are changing constantly whereas like the stability of like motherhood or even like post-saturn return women is like you kind of know what your role is a little bit more what your work is and obviously there's always permission to change your mind but it is difficult to try to like rise to be some sort of expert in some sort of field when you're literally figuring it out as you go. And yeah, that can be a lot of pressure for sure. Yeah. I feel like very supported right now and very interested in seeing what's to come. So great. So yeah. Well, I'll talk to you in a few months. All right. (laughs) you can keep in touch with us on instagram um maybe we'll do a christmas episode yeah oh yeah we are gonna do that okay yeah. cool i'm very a excited christmas gift for you all truly um and yeah if there's anything you're looking for in our time off or in season four you know where to find us mm-hmm. make sure you read the show notes yes always read the show notes <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.